this morning we're taking a bus ride from Hobart around the town. A tourist bus, we've got to get over that bridge in the distance, which is the, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what it's called. It's the one that takes us over the, what's the river that goes through Hobart? Not the left. It's the Derwent. I'm just going to stay on the left hand lane anyway. Yeah. I'm parked up on this hill <coughs> overlooking Hobart. Look at nice view. And that looks like it could be the cathedral down there. Possibly where we're heading. I what building this is, but it must be about the most ugly building in Hobart. I think Prince Charles should give it a, an award for being the most horrible building. So this short 10 minute walk, so called 10 minutes, has uh, been about 30 minutes. Mind you, I did stop to chat to somebody on the way. This is the tour we're doing. <clears throat> we just learned that the, forget the tour around the Cascade Brewery is uh, only if you're dressed appropriately. And apparently shorts and trousers are not appropriate, which is a bit of a shame. Anyway, we we'll stick to Cascade with today. But well, we're getting off there and then nevertheless just have a look at it. And there's one or two other things in that area, which we can go to. ...ahead of us, large waterfront warehouses like these were once used for the storage of apples. Apples that were grown down in the Huon Valley south of the city were brought to Hobart by a small steamer. From large sheds like these, ships in which we called apple boats, mainly from the UK, they're calling down here, they pick the apples up, exporting them all over the world. Fantastic atmosphere at the moment, we're driving on what used to be the water on reclaimed land. The old whaling ships that tie right alongside these sandstone warehouses, essentially where the cars are parked today. You'll see in the Battery Point area today. Most of the buildings up on top of the hill were built back in the 1820s and 30s, once for master mariners, shipwrights, whalers, sailors, all sorts of people that were involved in the maritime industry and the architecture in the Battery Point area certainly reflects those different occupations. Back in the early days of Hobart, Hobart Town as it was known then, it was quite a famous whaling port. A majority of the little whale boats that ply the door today were constructed on the shores of this area. It was designed by a convict architect, his name was James Blackburn. The spire of the church, it wasn't added until later years, but for many, many years was used as a lighthouse. A fire of some description, <coughs> back in 1642, and he named it that after the governor of Batavia at the time, Anthony Van Diemen. Hey, that name remained until 1853, and in that particular year, the transportation of convicts into the island. They wanted to take the stigma of the convict era away from the place, so they changed its name to Tasmania located in an area we know today as the Cascades. Still producing Australia's oldest beer, the Pale Ale. It was established by Peter de Graves back in the early 1820s, who initially came up here to the Cascades and built a water-powered sawmill, in which he later converted into the brewery. His original land grant once stretched from the present site all the way to the pinnacle of Mount Wellington, quite a vast tract of land. The Cascade site today boasts two great looking gardens. Firstly, we find at the Cascade Gardens off to our right, located at the base of the valley to our right, uh, is the female factory site. Our following stop, if you do head down in that direction, one very important feature do not wait for the bus at the site of Surrey. It was established in 1927. There were four floors added to the existing sandstone building, added to accommodate some new brewing equipment. And just beyond the hedge on our left hand side is the Cascade Visitor Centre, the factory bar and restaurant and it's also the departure point for the Cascade Brewery Tour. So it doesn't look like you can go into the brewery because the uh, sign here tells you to go over to the visitor centre. Well, that's where you register for the tour, but you've got to be wearing the proper dress. They will lend you the dress if you haven't got the uh, right dress, which seems to be mainly to have your legs covered. I don't really know why. There's nobody in skirts, as I can see. These guys are all on the tour. Um, 
the only other place I've been in the world where you have got to have your legs covered, I think, is it in a mosque. Down there is where you get the, uh, the beer itself. I don't know whether you have to pay to taste it, but uh, probably do, do if you're not on, on the tour. It's all got the feel of a winery and you're paying fancy prices for the ambience, which uh, uh, is a bit of much really when you <coughs> come to see where your favourite Aussie beer for the different beers. And we decided to go for an $11 tasting. Mike, Mike back home in Haswell would, would enjoy this and then we got the leaflet to um, describe and tell us how they vary. There's one missing which is Cascade Premium Light which is very popular in, in Perth but it's because of low alcohol one it, it's assumed that people don't want to taste it. Anyway, here we go. So there's a Tasmanian tiger that's now extinct. That is a replica that's been specially made for the brewery because it's their symbol, their trademark. And I think they've been using the trademark for about 20 odd years. Uh, the last tiger died probably of old age in the, in the zoo. Which was, all those are yours, yeah. Which is, which is your favorite one? Oh, dear. Or maybe you didn't like any of them. Not really. <laughs> <coughs> the stout, which I just finished off at the end, no, it's uh, a bit like Nickerson used to be in the old days. And then there's, this is the sort of new harvest one, which this is, is a bit of an acquired taste. This one's probably the lightest. The lightest, yeah. But, uh, this one, the Cascade Pale, five percent. They can't make enough of it, and it's not uh, pale. isn't it? That's the pale. Oh, sorry. What? What's number four then? Four, two, three. Draft. Oh, draft. That tasted a bit metallic, but the pale, five percent. They can't make enough of it, <coughs> and. Uh, for that reason, it's only made here and uh, in Victoria, possibly Melbourne. So we just wandered up to the uh, gardens to uh, have a look at the hops, but we can't spot the where they are. Yeah, I've done that, love. Nice old Ute. International, I don't know, probably American. There's no cart. Pity they don't tell you anything about it. Well, if you've never seen hops before, here's some hops. They don't normally grow them against a wall like this. Commercially, they're grown uh, in sort of uh, a bit like runner beans and usually the hops are these don't look to be very big at all but anyway there you go there's hops makes the bitter taste in in beer well, that's the other side of cascade business is the fruit juices there's quite a nice view of mount wellington Getting back, back on the bus at the Cascade factory. Yes, it's just in behind Woodstock House, the Cascade business. And we're heading yeah. for lunch yeah, somewhere down by the harbour.